that's my new toy 211 the big massive uh, high-speed oscilloscope with a horizontal bandwidth of uh, 500 kilohertz and if you want to see how small this is this is a 6080 tube and uh, front panel is just two controls which is what you basically need the volts per division and the time per division and the rest of the unnecessary controls are right here on the side you know how many times do you adjust the position yeah and that's for the external trigger or horizontal input common and there's a battery level indicator and the power cord is stuck all the way neatly in the back wrapped around here and that's the connection for the input so the probe is wired into the unit i don't have the probe complete probe assembly i just got only this one but there is a proper probe which comes along with this but the point is there is no bnc connector to put your input in that's how it sits and it comes with uh, pretty good accessories uh, especially if you want to see the waveform when there is too much light around there is a hood which you can you know, bolt it down here so as always um, i'm gonna get inside clean no i have already cleaned this and now the next step is to replace all the capacitors there is ton loads of bumblebees uh, black beauties and uh, you know yellow dragons and everything inside and I will uh, replace all the capacitors, I'll reform all the electrolytics, and I'm going to replace all the tubes inside. So I'll see you after that. How to open this guy up? Pretty simple. Um, take out these two screws, and there are two screws uh, going right inside here. Right here, as you can s probably you can see it. And this plastic screw is what holds the CRT inside. So you don't need to take this off to remove the case. That's the lift off. Mm -hmm. Or the case is shielded and this shield gets its ground through these connectors. This is the amplifier board. Um, now this is a solid state uh, instrument so be careful of ESD. You don't want to fry any of the custom ICs inside it. So you need to gently ply this connector out and then take the amplifier board off. That's a tube layout, 112BU7, two 6DJ8s and 112BH7 and 112BA6 and another 6AU6. Okay, coming back to reality. This is called as the amplifier board and what you see down below is the power supply board and this is the input board. I'm gonna take out the CRT. Okay, that is how the autopsy of uh, this scope is uh, performed. As I said before, just three basic units inside this. The amplifier board, and this is the power supply board. This is the input board. Uh, what happens is the input signal comes in here, goes through the alternator, gets a first level amplified, and then that signal is passed on to the amplifier board. And uh, this section also contains your uh, sweep generator IC, which generates a sweep, trigger, unblanketing signal, and then passes the sweep plus unblanketing to the amplifier board. And the amplifier board is so-called amplifier board because it sits with just one single chip. This contains two amplifier sections, which are used to amplify the signal received from the input board and then drive it to the CRT. That's where you see these four output transistors, which are used for driving the differential vertical and horizontal signal output to the CRT. And the fifth one is for the unblanking signal. And that's a CRT. Coming back to the power supply, the input AC comes in here. They don't use a transformer, but rather a resistive divider. I've explained this in my uh, blog in terms of how do they do it or, you know, the high level picture with the schematic. And the reduced input voltage is then coupled back, rectified and fed into a DC to DC converter, which converts these voltages into the internal voltage required for the whole unit to operate. So that uh, if there is AC input, it'll work from that. Otherwise, the battery will supply the same voltage to operate the DC to DC converter. There's a voltage multiplier sitting here that generates minus 1000 volts for the CRT. So be careful, even if it is tiny, it can still give you a zap. Now, couple of quick things. One, these capacitors are selected and used for very specific input voltage and frequency because the capacity of reactants varies according to the input frequency. So refer to the manual to figure out what capacitor you should use for a specific input voltage. Second, these batteries are not just batteries, they are capacitors as well, because there is no power supply filtering in this. The battery 
is the filter. So if your batteries are dead, there's a possibility that it can sink the current and keep the instrument dead. Or if they're completely open, it won't even filter. So don't try to operate this instrument without the batteries. That's a main switching transformer. These are the main switching transistors used for the DC to DC converter. You can see the power supply voltages uh, coming into the amplifier board are the pins which connect the amplifier board to the input board. Now, what my focus here is, this is a working instrument until uh, unless I screw it up. So, of course, the batteries are bad and uh, you can take them out. These are NICADs, so they are definitely, you know, dry or dead or whatever. I'm going to replace it with NICAD. I don't want to use any other battery because the charging circuit on this is uh, pretty primitive. It cannot take care of, you know, any scenarios. It's a simple constant current charger. So I'm just going to put a simple NICAD and use it. That's the only project I have to do in this, you know, otherwise the unit is working, I assume. So I'm going to open up these guys, replace these uh, dead cells with uh, this newbies nothing much to explain in this process you know take out all the five cells and five new ones in and the connector is uh, pretty simple uh, the positive is on both sides and uh, the negative is in the center that's the cell that's the second one while i'm at it you can see the the wiring of the cells all of them are wired serially negative is just uh, one wire in the center positive is just two wires what i am after is uh, these caps and these connectors do not throw these things into trash they need to be disposed of uh, properly That's the battery pack I've made. Each one of them measures about 6.4 volts. So the total of uh, roughly 13 volts. The surgery was a huge uh, success uh, and the patient died. Um, of course, I found a problem that uh, it's not powering on. The problem traced out to be a dry solder joint on the power switch. Uh, right over here so you know i'm gonna touch up on all the switches they take the pressure when you switch on and off and that's where the solder joint is broken so another quick point while i'm at it this is the connector for the power switch p6 uh, you can trace this in the diagram it comes from the uh, input board right here be a bit careful this side is dc from the battery these two contacts that goes to the power switch and this is main line power so be careful and since the line capacitor is sitting here you're gonna have line voltage in this pcb as well as here i ended up removing the power switch because the connection was still intermittent and you wouldn't believe this this through hole connection the trace what you see so this is the switch and this side is the cable which is going to the pcb this trace is intermittent like if i heat it up it starts getting the connection but once the solder cools down it's still open you know i could solder it directly here but i still wanted to see what's going on that's why i removed the switch a broken pcb it's all done and uh, it is really cute i should say i can see the trays even if there's too much of light around and uh, even the battery indicator is working let's have a quick overview of the instrument of course these two are uh, the main controls for the time base and uh, for the vertical sensitivity the rest all controls are on the side uh, we have vertical and uh, horizontal position vernier for both the time base as well as the uh, sensitivity and intensity control you have the trigger level control as well and you can adjust the input coupling and of course the power switch and the trigger control for internal or external external trigger the uh, input via this or if you're doing x y you can connect the external x here and that's a common this is the battery indicator these two nuts so called maybe are they to lock the hood in place if you go up on the horizontal scale you will see a voltage rating this is for external horizontal signal that's with some input signal volts per division and of course the time base position controls and that's the vernier for uh, the vertical and for the horizontal of course intensity and the trigger level it's an internal trigger now and i'm going to move it to external one more project over thanks for watching and take care. Fixing these things are easy. You know, the hard part is to find a place to keep them. Yeah, but I found one. And there is some more space on top of it.